From Fox 8 Sports, this is the Overtime Podcast. From the Fox 8 studios and Costa Mesa, California, this is the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. I'm Andre Johnson. Over on the other side is Sean Fazand. You're going on about two weeks in California, Sean, but before we get into today's episode, Please make sure to like, share, rate, review, and if you're watching on YouTube, hit that little bell down below so you can get that ding notification every time we post an episode so you don't miss any of this fire content. And be sure to comment too because we love reading those comments and we can really get into that on our next episode as well. Sean, how you feeling? I'm feeling all right. A little off day here for the Saints, but we keep rolling. We keep powering through. I join you now from the balcony of our Airbnb here in Costa Mesa, California. Been kind of all over uh, town the last couple days. So uh, good to be with you again to get a, another episode of the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. And it's been a it's been an interesting few weeks here in California. 11 practices in with the Saints. Things have gotten really, really physical and really competitive. It's been an overall good camp, and um, they move into the next phase in a couple of days. Of right, and as we head into that preseason game, that's really going to be where a lot of the players on this roster, especially guys who are either on the bubble or who are, or who are really competing for starting spots, are going to set themselves apart. So on that theme, our big picture for today, we're going to get into the top five performers from the first two weeks of Saints training camp, and we're going to get it started with a good old two-for-one, Sean, Go ahead and get into number five. <laughs> yeah, number five, I got I got a tie. I got a tie. Two guys that I think will contribute a lot uh, this season for the Saints. And two guys both on the defensive side of the ball. It's Alante Taylor and Pete Werner. Both guys have really had very, very good camps thus far throughout the two weeks. Now, Werner's been out the last couple of days with the shoulder injury. Again, very competitive, very physical. I think these beautiful conditions have somewhat... Uh, I think we've bypassed the fact that when they're between the white lines, it has been extremely physical, a lot of padded practices for the Saints and extremely competitive. And, you know, they're building an identity and obviously building an edge. But it has been a little costly with some of the injuries. So Pete Werner has been fantastic. I think what you're seeing with Pete, obviously, it's the growth as a player. We know that. It's his fourth year. Motivation as a player, which is twofold. One, he's going into a contract year. And this is a guy that had a little bit of a... We'll call it a down year, but somewhat of a, you know, uh, I don't know what you should call it, but not, not the best year a uh, season ago. And this year he wants to bounce back from that. And obviously as well, they brought in another great linebacker, Willie Gay Jr., who's also had a really good camp. Didn't make this list, but he's also had a really good camp. And you see why they like him. So I think he understands the situation that he's in. He's accepted the challenge. And I can't tell you how many times you'll hear Michael Hodges, who was one of the most active, uh, boisterous, uh, assistant coaches play in and play out after every single play. That boy Pete, that boy Pete. After making a stop on a play, whether it's a run play or blowing up a screen or making a sack. So I think Werner's been uh, really good. Alante Taylor's a guy I thought he started a little slow, but has really picked it up over the last, call it six or seven practices once the pads have come on. And they're asking him to do a lot now. Uh, a lot. I mean, I know it feels like it should be easy to go from outside to inside, and a lot of DBs say they can do it, but they haven't been asked to do it nearly as much as Elante Taylor's been asked to do it because when they go base, he's on the outside. When they go nickel, he moves to the inside. That's two different techniques. That's two different responsibilities. It's two different parts of the field you have to guard. It's two different sort of ways you have to approach it with the boundary and not having the boundary to your, you know, as your friend to your, you know, to your advantage. And he's been very active and he's been mixing it up, talking a lot uh, with Chris Olave, Rashid Shaheed. I think Paulson Debo mixed it in a little bit there as well. But Elante Taylor, I mean, He's been around, and he's been very active, and I think he's around the football. He had that great interception earlier in camp uh, from Derek Carr in the end zone where it was a really good play. So, And he's one that's not afraid to stick his head in and, and stop the run as well. And, look, they're getting a ton, an absolute ton of work in running the football. I said this on an earlier show that it, it just didn't feel like they ran the ball this much in camp in years past. Or if they did, we just really didn't know this because it was always run by number nine, and everybody understood the offense ran through Drew Brees, and even when Drew Brees left, we understand what the offense was. But this is a run-first offense, so they're getting a ton of run action, and Alante Taylor is not afraid to stick his head in there and, and, and support the run as well. So I think Pete Werner and Alante Taylor, they're tied for my fifth spot when it comes to uh, the top five players through the first two weeks of camp, the top five performers, and 
I think it's pretty well deserved. I think they've been pretty consistent. Right, and Sunday I did something that we call here at Fox Day, we call it archiving, which requires me to go through every practice clip that you guys have shot and kind of organize it in a certain way. And to do that, I wound up watching every single clip. And the player that jumped out to me pretty much more than anybody was Alante Taylor, Sean. I remember there was one day in one-on-ones yep. -on where he went against Chris Olave yeah. in pretty much every single one of his reps. And Alante Taylor won about 80% of those reps that we were able to shoot. And he's just been really impressive when it comes to the one-on-one -on -one game. And even when they are able to kind of run seven-on-seven -seven periods, Alante Taylor, of all the guys in the secondary, has been one of the main ones standing out. And then when it comes to Pete Werner, hearing that Pete Werner is having a good training camp is some of the best news that you can get as a Saints fan yep. because we talked about it before you went out to California. Right now, there's really no defined plan for life after the Mario Davis. He's been such a consistent right. and dominant force in the middle of that defense. So hearing that a young guy like Pete Werner is really starting to take steps forward, and if you can see that in the games as well, hey, that's ideal if you're the Saints, and especially that Saints defense. Yeah, and look, both those guys, and Pete Werner has got, gotten some rest with the Mario out the last couple of days. Uh, running the mic, so making the calls, making the checks, those types of things. So uh, he's gotten some quite a bit of reps when it comes to that. In Alante Taylor's case, he's just around the football, and it's easy to follow the ball in these situations. And you mentioned those one-on-one -on -one drills. That is so slanted in the wide receiver's favor. I mean, they got the whole field to work with, and it's a one-on-one. -on -one. There's no one else on the field. So very slanted is the wide receiver's favor. And I know the day you're talking about, I mean, Alante was all in one that day. I mean, he was... I think I kind of four pass breakups and an interception that day. It was just a phenomenal day of work for Alante Taylor. Right, so we've got the two for one with number five. But now as we get to number four, we've got one guy. And, Sean, that one guy is? Number four, I'm going to stick with number four, Derek Carr. I know this, uh, if you've watched practice, I know he's had a couple of interceptions. He had one yesterday. He had one very early in camp. And I mentioned the Alante Taylor thing. But what I'm really watching with Derek Carr isn't necessarily uh, – that I mean that's obviously very important but I, you can certainly see his level of comfort practicing and practice out uh, when it comes to this offense I had a chance to talk to him and you'll see uh, the full interview on Saturday on our pregame show at 630 uh, for the Saints Cardinals preseason opener but he's the guy that's really starting to grasp the system really starting to understand the, where to go with the football I think he's had a really really good camp and when you talk about this sort of wide zone you talk about this play action he's always flourished in that and to watch that sort of come together. There are about three or four practices now where I felt like I got it down. Derek Carr had a really, really good day, which is a really good sign because this is the earliest, this is the early stages of, of this offense. We think it's been a lot, but it's only been 11 practices for this brand new offense, brand new terminology. And obviously, he's always excelled when it comes to the play action game. And he's really done well in the two minute drills that they had the last couple of days of practice. One, he led him on a touchdown. And then on uh, Monday's practice, he led him to a game-winning field goal. They were down two with a minute 15 left. Had a, had a big fourth down completion of Chris Olave. So I think overall, Derek Carr has had a good camp. I know a lot of the attention goes to the backup QB battle, but don't forget about QB1. I think they trust him. I think he understands you know, what he has to do for this team to be successful. And I think he also understands what comes first in this offense, which I think is um, – it, it sounds obvious, but this is a run-first offense, and not all quarterbacks are going to embrace that. So it certainly feels like he's willing to embrace that to get more wins for the Saints. Right, and it's still kind of unclear how much actual playing time Derek Carr is going to get in mm -hmm. the preseason. So these training camp reps are very important for him because – you can expect Hayner and Rattler, you mentioned the backup quarterbacks, you can expect them to easily get 50, 60, 70 snaps over the course of the next three weeks in the preseason, but that won't be the case for Derek Carr. So he's kind of got to make the most out of the reps he's getting right now. Yeah, I'll be very curious to see um, if he, I know last year he played in the yeah. preseason opener for a drive. We'll see if that happens this year. Pay attention to those joint practices coming up uh, next week when uh, San Francisco comes to town. Obviously, San Francisco is a team that knows I think Kubiak quite well, but um, I think that's going to be a big week, a big sort of set of practices for Derek Carr. Right, and as we get into that number three player, it's a player who, honestly, at this point in the season, we didn't expect to be talking about. But as soon as he hit the field for training camp, he's made his presence known, Sean. No doubt about it. They should, Saints fans should be very, very, very happy with the emergence of number 99, Chase Young. Um, 
what else can you say? I mean, looks the part. There was such a curiosity about him because of the injury when they signed him. And then the update after they signed him, that after they signed that he needed the next surgery and everybody was kind of like, oh, here we go again, sign damaged goods, yet again, the injury issue. But, you know, worked his butt off to get back to, to get back ahead of schedule. We've said this many times. I mean, look, how many times have we seen a player, there's a projection, a target date, and he doesn't make it, then it gets extended, then it gets extended, then it gets extended to the point where you just kind of, you keep waiting and waiting and waiting, and just the date never seems to come. In Chase Young's case, he got back early. So give him credit for that because he recovered, uh, he rehabbed, it meant something to him. He didn't take it off. He took every step seriously. So that's one half the battle because it's always been about availability with him. But on the field, he's been a beast. He's been the best pass rusher. He's been the best defensive end. I and mean, it's no doubt about that. I mean, it, it, ever since the pads came on, he got on the field. He's been an absolute beast. And, you know, whether it's a sack, a tackle for loss on one play, blowing up the screen, or uh, just providing a pressure that just gets the quarterback off the spot. Chase Young has been fantastic. He was their premier free agent signing. And not only that, you're talking about a position group where they have invested so much and they just need someone to hit. Hopefully Chase Young is that guy. Again, I got some wood right here. <laughs> I'm gonna knock right there because uh, you want him to stay healthy. Obviously the injuries have followed him. That's why the Saints were able to get him for what they got him for to begin with. But from what I've seen, you understand why this guy was at one point considered the next generation of great pass rusher because he's just, he's got a presence. He's working on that side, working on a rookie a lot in Taliesse Fawaga. But I think, I, I don't, I had a sort of vision, I don't want to say a vision, but when you, when you hear the, the injury stuff with Chase Young and the recovery, in my mind, I was thinking if they get him back by our preseason, that'll be fantastic. Well, he beat that and not just beat that, he's been playing pretty awesome on the field so far. Right, and if you've seen, the Saints today released an unofficial depth chart for their week one preseason game, and on that depth chart, one of the most interesting parts of it was at defensive end, Cam Jordan was on one side, and on the other side, and I quote, was Carl Granderson or Chase Young. So just throughout his performance alone, heading into training camp, we talked about Chase Young really having to not just get back, but get back and earn that job from Cam Jordan, who's one of the greatest Saints of all time, and Carl Granderson, who really did a great job and was one of the best players on the defensive side of the ball last season. And it's only been two weeks, 11 practices to be precise, and Chase Young has already forced himself into the position to be a starter on a defensive end position that's pretty locked and loaded in that Saints room, Sean. Yeah, no doubt. And you're talking about, look, it's not going to take long to figure out. He's the best pass rusher on the team. He is. He just is. Carl Granderson's had a really good camp, but Chase Young is the best pass rusher on the team. You saw, you saw Young or Granderson. You'll see both those guys on the field at the same time. And what it's done, I think it's gotten allowed DA and the defensive staff to get to some of the variations of packages and groupings and versatility and what they can add in certain situations sooner in this camp than maybe they expected. You're seeing Cam Jordan kick inside with Brian Brzee next to him or Colin Saunders next to him. You're seeing Peyton Turner kick inside with Granderson and Chase Young you know, on the field. So he's given them more options, which obviously is huge when you're talking about the, the, the game plan that goes in week in and week out. And there's something bigger here as well. Think about the variance or the, the, the fine line between winning and losing, the playoffs or no playoffs. If all of a sudden that defensive end position, your score last year or your grade last year, call it a C, all of a sudden bumps up to a B, that doesn't just help that position, that helps the entire team, which obviously can help you know, overcome you know, the, the, the gap of not being able to make the playoffs. So I think Chase Young, it's, I've said it before, it's the most important development of training camp so far because Chase Young's presence, uh, let's just say the Saints can really, really, really benefit from it this season. And as we get into the number two player, Sean, we mentioned him earlier. We mentioned when Elante Taylor was going against Chris Olave, he kind of won that day. But there are a lot of days where Chris Olave has been the standout player in that offense. And Chris Olave is the one who kind of comes into this number two spot on the countdown. Yes, he does. Number two, where's number 12? Chris Olave. He's been great. He's been great. Um, new offense. They're asking to run different sort of routes. They're asking to run after the catch. They're asking him to do certain. They're asking him to block. Um, I think he's been great catching the football, um, getting to a spot, uh, 
Um, he's just him and Derek Carr have that rapport. I think there were six receptions yesterday, or six connections. Derek Carr and Chris Olave. So you're talking about uh, a guy that was very productive last year, despite dealing with some issues. I mean, he kind of went through like a mid-season funk, and it, it never actually felt like they were on the same page, Carr and Olave, until maybe the back half of the season. But they've clearly picked that up, and for Olave. It's, you know, you're not just running, you're running a lot of second level routes, you run a lot of over routes, a lot of, you know, digs and, and backside end cut type routes, but you're also running double moves. You know, Derek Carr hit him with a big double move uh, on, on Monday's practice. So Chris Olave has been smooth and he's added that run after catch ability to his game because that was the knock on him coming out of Ohio State. You know, he catch a 20 yard pass and he gains 21. Well, now if you catch a 15 yard end cut, hopefully you can run the way the play is designed, you can run and gain 30. I mean, that's just kind of the way the offense operates. So I think Chris Olave has embraced it. I think he's in a good place mentally. I think he's in a good place physically. Um, look, I don't think he's ever going to be a great blocker, but they're going to ask him to do a lot of that uh, in this offense. But wide receiver's got to block. There's no way around it. But throughout camp, I think he's been the second best or second most consistent performer. Anytime the ball's thrown his way, he usually comes right, out. Right, and before you headed out there, I know we talked about kind of guys who had the most to prove as they headed to California, and Chris Olave was one of the guys we named simply because you want him to grow into being a legitimate number one wide receiver this year. You want him to be able to be entered into the discussions of a C.D. Lamb, a Tyreek Hill, a Jamar Chase, a Justin Jefferson. And the hope is that this new offense led by Clint Kubiak and a better Derek Carr could lead to that. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, just look at the success of the receivers that right. had in the system. Uh, look at the success you know, this run first play action game, it sounds crazy, but has a lot of success for receivers because, you know, uh, you're getting a lot of uh, situations where the, the offense, is, or excuse me, the defense is caught in a two way conflict and you get that extra step and you've got the speed and you've got the elusiveness of Chris Olave, then obviously you can make plays. And I think this is a chance to not just be Saints wide receiver one, but be one of those guys around the NFL. I mean, receiver position has really blown up over the last few years, but maybe it's time for him to kind of. Uh, introduce himself to the, to the to the NFL in its entirety if you want the top young receivers. Anyway. Right, and you mentioned how well receivers have been in that Clint Kubiak type offense. We saw it in San Francisco with Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, but somebody who is, or the position that really thrives in this system has been running back, and that leads us right to our number one player on the countdown, Sean. Yeah, this shouldn't be a surprise. You've kind of been following my blogs and the shows we've been doing. Uh, Alvin's look great. Alvin Kamara's look fantastic. I mean, he looks good physically. Um, and I don't know where he was physically in previous years, but the numbers don't lie, the tape don't lie. Some of it was offensive line the last couple of seasons, but some of it was just he wasn't making guys miss the second level. Let's change this year. I mean, it's changed. Um, it's changed so far in Cal. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. He's had, he looks clean. He looks smooth. He looks uh, quicker. I mean, he's never a straight line fast fast guy he's always been a smooth sort of quick guy that can kind of change directions very easily and this offense they rely heavily on his vision um, and he's a guy that's uh, run the ball well he's caught the ball obviously extremely well there was a big wheel route uh, from Derek Carr a couple of days ago in one of the team periods where he just dusted Pete Warner I mean it's just no contest there and on a man man type play scored a touchdown so when you talk about Camaro and you talk about what could have been in terms of problems, in terms of contracts, in terms of issues, in terms of sitting out. That didn't happen. But even if that doesn't happen, you still have the possibility of kind of a mopey, kind of a going through the motions type player. When in the periphery or in the back of your mind, you know that contract's not getting settled. And, you know, sometimes players can take that as a slight. But that hasn't been an issue either. So he's not just here. He's embracing the new offense, and he's flourishing in this new offense, just at least in terms of 11 practices that we've seen thus far. I think that's been a fantastic development for the Saints, which could have pivoted in the wrong direction. It could have been a total catastrophe, total distraction. It's been a 180. I think he's been the most consistent player of Saints training camp. And I just, look, in years past, as I mentioned, it's hard to get a gauge on where the running backs stand because there's so much passing. You don't always bring guys down uh, with running backs. But here, they're hitting hard. I know guys aren't supposed to go to the ground, but they're going to the ground. So, um, and he's, he's looked fantastic. He had a veteran day off on Monday, but 
he's been a guy that I think has answered the call, and I think he's a guy Clint Kubiak's going to rely on this year. Right, and you touched on the contract situation, and because of that, we weren't exactly sure if we were even going to be able to see Alvin Kamara at training camp when they headed to California we, because they still haven't necessarily come to terms on a deal that'll make both sides happy. But Alvin Kamara needed training camp more than anybody, you can argue, because this Clint Kubiak offense, it's focused around running the ball. It's focused around using running backs in creative ways. And for the Saints to have a successful year, for the Saints offense to be good this year, no doubt about it, Alvin Kamara has to play well. And for that to happen, he's got to really get ingratiated with this new system. And he didn't have a chance to do so in uh, OTAs. In mini camp, he left early. So this is really his first full dive into this Kubiak system. So to see him there, to see him engage, like you mentioned, and to see him playing well, that's the absolute best news you can get if you're a Saints fan because you need AK. Especially with Kendra Miller being injured right now. We really don't know what the situation behind Kendra is. Jamal Williams, he's been good in spurts, but you don't necessarily want him to be the guy who you're giving 20, 25 touches this season. This Saints offense is not designed to be successful without Alan Kamara in it. So having him as the number one player on yeah. your list, that's a good sign for Saints fans. Yeah, and look, um, who knows how much the Clint Kubiak factor played a role in him just saying, you know what, I'll put all the stuff aside, just, I'm going to be here and because i, I got to be all in on this new system. It's fresh, it's new, it's something that, I, that you know, if you list, read between the lines in press conferences last year, you know he was frustrated with the offense and the lack of, remember we called it matchup ball, they're not playing. So who knows how much of a factor that played in. Regardless, he's here, and the Saints have certainly benefited. Who knows the business side if that's going to get worked out. Um, and I'm sure that's something that's going to pop up periodically now over the next, you know, couple days and weeks but to have him here dialed in focused and like I said in my opinion the most consistent player in camp thus far I think that's just I don't, it couldn't have gone any better for the Saints when you were on the edge of a potential problem and, not, and that wasn't the case and he's always he's a very smart football player high extremely high football IQ that's why he got on the field so quickly when he was a rookie uh, back in 2017 so to see him pick it up quickly and understand the you know the gaps and the where you need to be and the landmarks doesn't surprise me um but it's just happy I'm, I'm just i'm happy to see him from a body language standpoint just being all in and dialed in for the saints offense in and now we're about five days away from when the saints have that first preseason game against the arizona cardinals a few more practices until then so what are you watching for through the rest of the week as they head into that game a couple things one we have not uh, I say it, uh, said it on our uh, overtime show. Beautiful conditions. I said it earlier, beautiful conditions. But this has been a very physical camp. Injuries are starting to add up a little bit. And I think it's starting to add up maybe a little bit more than DA had. DA had a couple things are happening. One, uh, the physicality and competitiveness are, are, are there. I mean, it's, it's full two and a half hours, 14 periods, full pads. Like I said, not supposed to tackle to the ground, but a lot of guys going to the ground. So that's football beat up on each other for days and weeks at a time, you're going to get injuries. But also, you can get lulled to sleep out here with, this, with these conditions and maybe give you a false sense of security when it comes to hydration and taking care of your body. So that's happening as well. So I think that they got to get a handle on that. I wonder if they dial it back a little bit or if they keep pushing through. I know he wants to develop that edge uh, with this team. Um, we'll see once they get through the first preseason game, if they keep that going or if they dial it back. But also, uh, look, there's some other battles that to really discuss. You know, the safety battle is one that I'm not sure there's a leader yet next to Tyron Matthew. You got Jordan Howden, you got Jonathan Abram, and you certainly have uh, uh, Will Harris there battling it out. So I think it's been a it's been a uh, an interesting competition to watch that I'm still paying attention to. And also preseason game wise, got to see the right five, the offensive line. Is it going to come together? I'd be curious to see who actually gets some reps. Uh, in the preseason game. And speaking of that preseason game, you guys can catch that preseason game on Fox 8. 6.30, we're getting into it with a pregame show. It'll be Juan, Sean, and former Saints Pro Bowler and Super Bowl champion, Jermon Bushrod. We'll have the game itself. We'll have a halftime report. We'll have a postgame show from 6.30 all the way to about 11 p.m. Stick with Fox 8. We'll have all of the coverage from the Saints' first preseason game. Sean, you got anything else for us? No, I think that's it. We got uh, 
Got some sunshine. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for plenty of that. Back at it tomorrow. And then, uh, but I, I do think uh, everybody's ready yeah. for a preseason game. There's no doubt about that. Also, check out the uh, exclusive one on one with Derek Carr, Saints pregame show, 6 30 on Fox 8 coming Saturday. There we go. Check it out. It's going to be really fun for Sean Fazan, for Andre Johnson Jr. Thank you for joining us and catch us next time on Overtime.